Hello, we're going to start chapter four at the uh, point of um, looking at the uh, videos. And uh, if you look at the videos that are at the bottom of my website, there's an a Siemens initial program called Hot Dog, and there's an Allen Bradley initial program called Hot Dog. And in both of these cases, I go through and show how the programming is developed. And so we're we'll talking about chapter four but you can uh, get this information from uh, either the um, the, uh, the chapter as in reading through the chapter or you can get the information just as well from um, this uh, video and you can play this video and you can listen to it now there are some quite there are a few changes from the 1214 and 1215. Once I get a handle on the 1215, I'll let you know some of those changes. But basically, um, the 1214 uh, is the one that is, is featured here. And the IP addresses are a little different, as we talked about in last the uh, last uh, time. So we're going to go back and we're going to talk about Chapter 4 uh, today and look at that. But uh, just for... Uh, your information, uh, that is uh, where I would start, would be uh, with the video at the end of this chapter. So that's that's what we're going to be talking about is uh, chapter four is programming. So chapter three was just getting up and getting running. Chapter four is about actually programming a programmable controller. So we talk about Siemens, we talk about Alan Bradley, and what are some of the differences? Well, with, with Alan Bradley, you start with a main program with Siemens, you start with what they call organization blocks. And there's a biggie called OB1, and that's the, the main program that you actually start with. And uh, that's where uh, you you store your program is in OB1. And you can go through this whole semester and store your program in OB1, and you'll be good to go. So we, we look at a, um, a basic flow of how things are done inside the program controller and you see the work area. This would be your programming area. This would be your, your blank sheet of paper area, and, and you can see that. Over here on the right side are the instructions. Over here on the left is the project tree, but this is the area you're actually going to create your program in right there. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much how you would start uh, your program. Uh, the addressing, we're going to talk a little bit about because everything has to be called something or another. You have to call it by some name. So in the uh, program, um, we, we, give, we give a name to the, the, this, this device right here, and we have to give it, it's called a tag. And we have to give it a tag. We have to define that tag. So each of these devices, each of these contacts have to be defined. And in general, the immediate ones are the ones you want to stay away from. It's the one that you come up with, and it's a it's a easy way to define a tag. It's called an immediate tag. But the problem with those tags is they they, they don't stay in your program. They, they they go away, and at the end of the scan, they they reset, and you don't get to. If you want to take something and then later on in, the, in that same scan use it, and then it's thrown away. That's okay, but other than that, you do not want to use those uh, local tags. Use uh, the uh, global tags is what you want to use. So please stay away from local tags as best you can. Okay, um, so we talk a little bit about various tags, and we make a contact. We create a contact here, and we have this name. So this is the the name that we're talking about so you have to create a tag at, for that and so how you do that is uh, it's uh, it's important that you that you uh, give it a name uh, with uh, Siemens you you give it a name uh, it, it's a meaningful name usually not just a, a label like a1 or a2 but a meaningful name that gives you some idea of what it is that you're, you're uh, that you want now, if you choose global, it's going to ask you for a uh, an M tag, an M tag, an either or an I or a, or, a, or a Q. So basically, M's are internal bits, I's are inputs. Inputs go to a screw terminal, 
and Q's are outputs that go from a screw terminal on out. Now M is a, an internal memory area that every processor has one and, and it's like a, 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 a house or a, a, a deck of cards so you, you, you use an M bit and you can't double use it or else you'll have problems. So the first address would be M0.0, .0 byte 0, bit 0. So that's the, the, the addressing scheme. So this would be byte 0, bit 0. So if you want to, that's a global addressing bit, bool, addressing bit bool type. So this is a legal address and I would, I would encourage you to use this type of addressing scheme for Siemens. Now, Alan Bradley does not have this table in their addressing scheme and the reason that they didn't is they walked away from it. They used to have it with the RS Logix 500, but with RS Logix 5000 they, they, they went away from this fixed uh, table and that's one of the major, major differences between the two companies. I'm not saying one is better than the other, just the way that they have of Siemens has of tying things to this M table and that's one of the things that they can now go back and legacy devices can use this M table for various various and sundry things that they that they wanted to use the, to use it for. Here is an I. I0.0 .0 is a as a byte dot bit of of an input. So this would be a discrete input, a boolean input. So if I wanted to tie an input to 0.0, .0 I would say wire it to that and then program it to that bit. That would be the, the programming bit in my program that would reference, excuse me, that, that would reference uh, I0.0 .0 would be that input right there. And we, we chose a normally closed contact for it, but it could be a normally open or normally closed. Okay. So again, Stay away from local variables, use global variables, and make them either I or Q or M. Internal bits or M bits. Output coils are M bits unless they go to a physical output. In this case, um, we're not doing that. Um, okay. So this would be an internal bit right here. Okay, so um, again, um, it gives you an overview of, of uh, Siemens. You look at the video. The video goes through and does a very good job. This is uh, the main program from Alan Bradley's point of view, and this is what you would see. Now, as of version 32, they've changed the look and feel a little bit, but it basically looks the same, except they went to a little more what they call an international version or international flavor of the um, of the of the, the screen. So I'm thinking in terms of this would be the little bit older version, but they look basically the same. If you look at the newer the newer one and the look at the older one, they look very similar. And as you look in the book, some of the new or the newer will be shown, but it's the same thing. Over here on the left is the project tree. Here are your instructions. Here's your, your area to work with on um, your program. Now, another main difference between Alan Bradley and Siemens is Alan Bradley has a scroll down like you're reading off of a scroll, like it's like a piece of toilet paper or a scroll, and it just keeps going. Each of these are called rungs, R-U-N-G, a rung on a ladder. Now, with Siemens, they have networks, but within a network, you can have a number of what we would call rungs that you could put. You can put one rung in a network. You can put 10 rungs in a network. You can put 100 rungs in a network. And they work basically the same. And I would suggest that you explore both possibilities. If, if a, a program works for you with everything in the same network, you can do that. If at some point in time you find that something isn't working 
one of the main things that I tell people is that you may want to move it to another network. Now, why would you have one versus the other? Well, you get more on the screen at the same time if you are looking at a wrong approach as opposed to a network approach. Each network takes up more space so you can see more on the screen if you get more in one network as opposed to multiple networks. So Alan Bradley has two ways of describing uh, a uh, contact. One is under favorites. There's your contact, normally open, normally closed, and there's your coil. And they also have it under bit. There is your normally open, your normally closed, and your various types of coils. And uh, you can choose either place. So you can either choose under favorites or under bit. And either way, it works. So again, you create a rung, bring in a contact, and then describe it here. So it can be done just exactly like this. New tag, right click on, on the question, root new tag, and you can then go through and uh, look at it. Okay. You have a choice, and we go through this. Is, a, is it a base or is it an alias? And you may choose either approach. We talk about the differences in the video. Okay. This is a layout of your inputs and your outputs, the names for the inputs and the outputs. Alan Bradley. This is the actual labeled data point for your input, and then you would have an alias to another name, which would be a meaningful name. This is something that you would you would use to tie to a specific input, but then you would alias it to another name, which would be a name that would be uh, a, a variable that you would say like uh, valve one or uh, switch one or whatever you would want to call it. So here would be the the I.O. name. And then you want to give it a name as an alias. The uh, Alan Bradley does their branching a little differently. They do this idea right here, and it's kind of like throwing a rope around some point, and then you basically move this over, and you will see that that's the way that you create a, a path around. Then you come back down here, and then you can start putting something in once you've got your cursor at this point right here. Again, that's handled in the video. To start another rung, just simply click right here, and that'll start another rung, and then you just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. Okay, so you watch the video, then you have to wire the inputs, wire the outputs. And you're in, on your on your way. We talk a little bit about troubleshooting, but basically uh, the troubleshooting comes as you uh, trying to ascertain your debugging techniques. So this is the symbol for going online, and you click on that, and it takes you to the online. Once you've downloaded the program, it, it, it takes you to the process. Again, the process for doing the download and going online is different between the two processors, but the video takes you through that process. If you have questions, please give me a, an email or a call. Now, when you're online with Siemens, you see these green balls and, and squares, and you see above the, the logic, you see the orange, and that's some signifying you're in the online mode. The orange means you're online. The green means you are the program that you have in the offline uh, in your computer and the program that you have online are the same. If they're not or if they're not green, it means you've got a difference between the two. Now, once you've got the program online and running, you click on these little glasses and the Siemens. Alan Brady doesn't have little glasses, but basically you go into the run mode either way. Siemens, you have to go this extra step of clicking on the little glasses, and you see the green. Green on the left, Alan Bradley has green on the left and green on the right. That means you're in the online mode and you're looking at the online program. And if you click on that, 
you can actually see it running and that's important because you actually see the process running from that point of view. If you have a problem go over and look and see if you're in the run or stop mode With Alan Bradley, you've got to do the, the who. And then download. Drill down and download. And on Alan Bradley, you see the green on the left and the green on the right, and that means you're looking at the online program. Okay. So, now... Um, so here is our first program and this is the program that you're going to be going through and looking at and this is a uh, given program we're just going to give you this program and uh, it's not easy this is not an easy program to have written to have been able to see the first time but in other words I'm just going to give you this one so here is the idea um, these two fellows are at the uh, ballpark and they push these buttons to give you ketchup and mustard on your hot dog and uh, if you were at the at the ballpark you would see these two guys working there at the at the stand and, and Fred pushes mustard and Rudy pushes ketchup and you don't get a hot dog without both ketchup and mustard on it uh, and they've been turning in numbers of how many hot dogs they've been selling and it doesn't make sense because you you don't see that amount of money in your uh, in your cash drawer so what you're doing here is you're saying I'm big brother in a sense I'm gonna watch these two guys and if they don't both push ketchup and mustard and then how many counts we get for hot dogs I'm gonna check and see what their actual number is so any either order ketchup or mustard can be pushed and then once the second one is pushed and the finger is left lifted off the button you in increment the count and that's what's going on in this program so this is a generic I program it generically here but you push the ketchup button it's an input and then we don't worry about this contact here but we have this feedback here that says I remember that I pushed that button and this seals that and says I remember that I pushed that button here's the same for mustard so you can do this in any order and then you say I remember that I pushed the ketchup I remember that I pushed the mustard and my finger is off both buttons I count this is called an internal bit but it counts by one and I go to a counter so this is my counter so how do I do this well you look at the videos and you will see how that's done both Alan Bradley and Siemens. Okay. Here's a counter for Alan Bradley. Alan Bradley for Siemens. That's how you create a counter. Okay, and that's done in the video as well. So that should get you through chapter four. There's one question at the end of chapter four that uh, I would like you to answer, and that is this button right here, this question right here. Um, in the program, if the input for ketchup was changed from a normally open to a normally closed, how would the program have changed or not changed? And the function of the push button. How would you how would you change the writing of the program if your contact was instead of was a normally open was a normally closed? And that's the only thing I'm going to ask you is question number one at the end of chapter four. This is a, a lab that we're going to uh, be talking about that is a starter lab, and uh, this one is just totally given to you as a student. So you don't have to uh, go through the process of, of having to develop logic for this this lab but you're expected to learn the process of how to set up the program uh, and you may be doing it as a um, online with a, a real life processor or you may do it be doing it in some kind of a, a simulator or emulation mode 
but whatever the mode that you're working at, the goal is to get you familiar with the uh, process of uh, doing all the keying in of the information. And we understand that that's not all um, today is it's it's not all uh, you don't have all the techniques of how to do all that stuff but hopefully at the end of the day that you'll have had a good experience and you'll get this up and running and from that point on we will expect you to be able to start writing your own code and uh, that's pretty much what this whole course is about you learn to write program code that would give you the ability to uh, automate a machine so this is a statement of this project and always we have some kind of a statement with the project about what it's about, what uh, the process is, and what you're what you're learning in this in this process. So uh, this is a, a story of uh, two uh, individuals, and uh, they're they're uh, at the ballpark, and they're making hot dogs. So Fred dispenses mustard, and Rudy dispenses ketchup. So you don't sell a hot dog without both. Fred and, and Rudy putting their condiment on the hot dog. So each one pushes a button and the, the, the story behind this is kind of like we think that they're not giving us the actual number that we we're actually selling but we don't really know so you have to find a way of proving it and this would be one way of doing it and I'm not a proponent of using PLCs for a, some kind of a big brother type thing where you're observing something but in this case this um, this is what this is for. It's observing two people doing an activity and then counting and giving that count. And you say, well, is this ever done in a real world? Well, this is actually a project from a real world uh, application in which the uh, people were actually in a foundry and they were making uh, poured molds. And each mold had a cope and a drag. The cope would be the top half of the mold and it was the sand mold. So they were pouring brass into a sand mold Cope is the top half, the drag is the bottom half. So the person who was making the cope pushed a button for sand. When he pushed that button, he got a lot of sand. So he could, you could say, well, is, is, is this real? Yes, it's real. And uh, somewhere along the line, they were giving extra counts. And these were a limit switch that there was on the system down downstream from the, where the molds were. And every once in a while, somebody would, just when nobody was looking, go down there and, and push the limit switch a few more times and give them a few more counts for their... For their count for the day so this was an attempt to make that a little bit harder to do so again um, the count was uh, a little bit harder to uh, increase artificially but we're talking about at the ballpark when Fred and Rudy and we're making hot dogs so this is a program that if you were given this program as a, a challenge it's not easy there's a couple subtleties to it and you'd probably gotten most of it pretty quickly but there's some parts in this that were not so easy but the 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 solution here is rather um uh, it's a nice solution and as you look at it you think wow uh you know would i have ever been able to do that and and the answer is yes you would maybe not today maybe not in a week or so but you should be able to do problems like this and and this is the kind of activity that this is what we're asking you to be able to do somewhere in this course can you do this kind of thing so kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what you're what you're up against with this but it's another way of saying you can do this and um, this is this is what we were expecting you to do so here's the ketchup and the mustard and it goes on the hot dog and and then here is a rendition of this program so as you look at it you say well that isn't so hard what is this this is a seal circuit this is a seal circuit so we we remember the ketchup we remember the mustard then when they're both remembered and the fingers are off both buttons then we do a bit this bit counts it, it runs to a counter and we see that count going up so now we're going to do this for the siemens you could do it as easily for the Ellen bradley but again, I'm just going to run through and do the logic for this in one program controller and hopefully you will see how it can be done on other program controllers as well. Now also in this lab we're going to expect you to know how to wire a little bit and this would be the only wiring that you're necessarily going to have to do but you're going to have to do it. And the key to this is 
First of all, you take the, the 24 volts from an L, either here or here, it doesn't matter which one, but you get to 24 volts, and that goes to your push through your push button to the input. So we're assigning one input to 0, I0.0, .0, and then we would do the other one to I0.1. That's not all you have to do, however, you have to tie the M or the 0 volt reference to the 0 volt reference for these in these inputs. So this is important as well as this. So you must remember to do both. And I've already done that on, on the program controller that I'm going to be using. Now again, you may be using a slightly different variety of the program controller. You might be using a different manufacturer's program controller. But this pretty much, you always have to tie the zero reference to some zero voltage so that they know that this knows when it sees 24 volts, that 24 volts with respect to what? Well, right here. So that's why this is important and this jumper must be there. So now we're going to come back and we're going to look at the the uh, processor. We're going to look at the um, the uh, uh, physical device here. We're going to get it in here in just a second. And uh, we're going to get up and running with the um, Okay, we're going to start now with the uh, hot dog lab, and we're going to do it with Siemens first. And I've already created the project called Hot Dog One. I'm going to add a new device, and I'm going to go back to the 1214, 1214 DC DC DC. Again, you need to look and see which one you're going to be using. It's either 1214 DC DC DC, or 1214 DC DC relay. 1215 DC 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 processor but we're going to go with the 1214 we're going to go down and we're going to pick the 40 which that's the one that I have and we're going to pick the version of the, of the firmware which is 4.0 or 4.1 click OK now we're going to go back and we're going to remember we have to add the signal board the AQ signal board and drag it over populate that board Come down, click the port, the Ethernet port. Have to maybe, maybe have to drag this up to see the Ethernet port. Change the 1 to a 3. Enter. And I usually will do this every time to just make sure that everything is working. I'm going to right click, compile, right click. Download the device. Always check to make sure the compile works, but I did. It worked. Okay. And again, 192, 168, 0, and 3. PNIE. This is the card where it's coming from. It might say PNIE again, or here in this case it says direct. Start search. It found it. So it comes up orange. I click load to make sure that everything's working and it says it's working so I'm finished but I don't have anything in there there's no reason to go online to check but I am going to come back now and start creating a program so on main or OB1 I'm going to start and I'm going to bring contacts down. Now you can bring contacts and coils down from up here or you can bring them up from down from over here, either choice. But this is easier, so I'm going to do it from over here and I bring it normally open contact down. Now this, this is the program that I'm looking at at the end of chapter four, which is the hot dog counter. Now the first one I want to say is ketchup. Ketchup, enter. Now it's got a little red line under it, so that means it's got to be defined, and I say define tag. And at local temp, you do never want to go local, and it's either going to be global memory, global input, or global output. I'm going to say global input. And notice that it defines it as I0.0, .0, which is the first one, which is, that's good, because that's what we're going to use it as. So the first input, the 0.0, .0 input, is where we're going to have, if you click on ketchup, that input is going to turn on. So basically we're going to click define. And now it comes up and it's good to go. Now the next contact is a normally closed contact. 
And it's an internal contact that says both. And that means with both ketchup and mustard. Right click, define tag. Again, stay away from local, go to global. But this is a memory. Notice this is memory. And it starts at the first bit in the first word of my M table. And I click global memory, M0.0, .0 bool, which is a Boolean, and click define. Now, that's the second contact in our, in our, in our first rung. Then I'm going to go over and click the coil, which is over to the right. Now, this is going to be catch-up remembered, C-A-T-S-U-P underscore R-E-M. Okay, now this is a new tag. Right-click, define tag. And it's not going to be local. It's going to be global. And it defines it rolls to the next bit, 0 0.1. So we used uh, 0, 0.0 for both, 0 0.1 for catch-up remembered. Click define, and we're good. Now, the next thing is I'm going to move this down a little bit. And I'm also going to hit this little up arrow here to give me a little bit more space. And I'm not going to use run, I'm not going to do run network two, but I'm just going to put everything in run in network one for right now. So here we go. This is the contact for the ketchup remember. This is going to give us our seal circuit. And notice as soon as I tar start typing ketchup remember, it comes up. Now I bring this up and I'm going to tie it to that, that green point right there and I'm going to let go. So that's how we create a parallel path in this in this rung is to do that. Now I'm going to stick the next one right along in next right here. I'm not going to go to network two. I'm just going to go to network one. And I'm going to use another contact. This is going to be mustard. Right click, define, not a local, but a local or global input. And it rolls to the next one. See, it's I0.1. Click define. And then I'm going to come down here and click another and start typing the B and it comes up with both. And then the coil over here and it's going to be mustard remembered. Okay. Now notice what it does. Define tag and it rolls to the next bit in the M table, which is M0.2. So we now use 0 0.0, 0 0.1, and 0 0.2. All right. Next thing is that little I, little branch, and then I click another contact and say mustard, and I start typing it, and there's my mustard remembered, and I can now come down here, click on and bring this tie point back to the first row, and I now have a tie point there for mustard. So now I have two rungs, or two sets of logic, and they're both in the same network, and you can do that. Let's come down here, and I'm going to do another one. This one is mustard remembered. Normally open, mustard remembered. Let's go ketchup remembered, because that was the first one I did. C-A-T-S-U-P remembered. And mustard remembered. And not ketchup, which is an input, and not mustard. Okay, so there's some logic there that you're going to have to look at. And then the coil is the both. So now we've created three lines of logic. And we are getting set to try to do a count. So when we have both ketchup and mustard, but we've lifted our fingers off the button, we can now come down and we can get a count. So let's do another contact down here for both. And then we're going to go over here because we don't have the counter over there. So we're going to go to a counter here and a CTU, counter up. We're going to do this, we'll do it right there. We're going to call this hot dogs and click on it. And now let's look and see what we got. So it's got a PV, which is your, your set point, and it's going to be 99. Nine. We're going to put it as a big number so we never get there. So don't worry about it. And we can leave the CV or the output, the actual number of counts, alone. We do not need that. And we can leave the reset alone. We don't need that. So now we're going to 
say okay let's try this out and see what we got so let's go up here use this compile button now now we could have done the other way come back and clicked on the gray box which is devices and networks and then click it there but here i don't have to go back to that gray box i can go up to that compile button right up there and click compile and see if it compiles and if it does you should be able to see the, the nice little report down here it says compiling finish zero errors zero warnings good to go and then you do this download right here to device and it's going to sit there and now that we've already done it once it's going to go a lot faster this time so you click load it knows where to go no action finish now i can go online if i want to go online and i get these green balls over here and i get this orange up here in the top so it says basically the orange says i'm online the green balls say that i am have the same program in the program controllers I have on the screen. And uh, the only other thing I do is click the little glasses over here. And that basically says, if I click the little glasses, that, no, I don't want to go, I click them once, that's all you have to do. And now I have to start the processor. Sometimes you are in the, you're not in the run mode. I have to click run and you want to change it to run. Okay, now I see the green, and that means that it's running, and I can start trying this thing out. So if I were to turn on that I, 0.0, .0 and that's this guy right here, should be able to turn it on. You see, when I push the button, it turned on. Now I lifted the button and it stayed on. Okay, so that's the first one. Now watch what happens when I turn on the second one. See what happens? It, um, it turned it on. Okay, now um, it already had counted once because I guess it was already sealed. But let's do it again. Let's do this again. I lift my finger off of it and then I come back and turn on the first one. See if I can get the first one to turn on. Okay, so Okay, why is it counting up when I just push one instead of both? Good question. Okay, now let's start. Okay, they're both off now. Let's try it again. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, so let's try it and see what we got. And let's reset our counter. Well, let's not worry about the counter. The counter's going up. That's that's good. But evidently, my, I've got noise in my line here a little bit. And let's just do the, the zero one. That one turned on. Now let's do the one. And evidently, it... Uh, if I have if I have bounce in my signal, which evidently I do, it, it turns it on um, more than once. So again, I'm probably getting some bounce in my signal, and that's that's bad. So if I hit it and then it hits again, it probably that's what it's doing. But it is counting and it is working. So again, uh, this should be okay. But if I have bounce in my signal, there's the first one. There's my second one, and it counted. That's good. If you have a noisy signal for some reason or another, it will cause problems. But if you have straight signals, if you have good signals, it'll be all right. But there is the working program for the hot dog counter. All right.
and it's counting. See the count? It's going up. 